Have you ever had your RV light stop working, but the outlets work just fine? Or maybe your fridge won't run, even though everything else seems normal. If so, you might be dealing with a converter or inverter issue. Knowing the difference between these two, what each one does when they fail, can save you a ton of time troubleshooting. In this video, I'll break down the key differences, common failures, and how to test if your converter or inverter is working properly. Now before we jump in, let me explain what the converter and inverter do inside of your RV. So what is a converter? What they do is they plug into shore power source somewhere and they take that 120 volts you're plugged into and make 12 volts out of it. The 12 volts they're supplying will charge your battery inside of the RV. And the 12 volt power that is supplying runs things like your lights, your water pump, and your fans. So if you're not plugged into shore power, have your generator running, or using solar panels, your battery will supply the 12 volt power needed to run certain appliances. Once your battery runs low, anything that depends on a battery to supply power will stop working. Now what's important to know is all RVs have a converter because a lot of appliances need both 120 volt and 12 volt power to operate. The 120 volt powers the appliance while the 12 volt powers the control board which is the brains for that appliance to operate. So now let's talk about what an inverter does. The inverter takes 12 volt power from the batteries and creates 120 volt power for things to operate. Typically microwaves, refrigerators, or it allows certain outlets to work when you're not plugged into shore power. Now not all RVs have an inverter. They are typically an upgrade for people who want to use things inside of their RV when they are off grid. The inverter allows things like TVs, laptops, or other appliances that requires 120 volt shore power to operate off the batteries. Now let's look at what happens when each of these systems stops working properly. Now to recap, since a converter is charging your batteries, everything that needs battery power to operate could be affected. Now if your lights are not working but your outlets do, the RV could be getting 120 volt shore power but the converter is not charging the batteries. Appliances like the air conditioner, refrigerator, or water heater not working. These appliances require 12 volt power to operate the brains like the control board, so that could mean a dead converter. If the battery fails due to extremely low voltage, this could be the converter failing and not properly charging the battery, leading to deep discharge and premature battery failure. Now sometimes it could be no power to the converter. This could be a wiring issue inside of the RV, a problem with your shore power, a bad circuit breaker, or as I commonly see, a dropped leg on a 50 amp RV. Now let me show you how to test if your converter is working. So let me get one out. So first off, let's look at the label on it. You can see the input voltage is 105 to 130 volts AC. But for testing it, you look at the output voltage, which is 13.6 volts DC. If we were on lithium, it'd be at 14.6 volts DC. So they're pretty simple to test. These ones have an outlet plug. You'll plug it in. Now in the end here is a red and a black. So we'll use our multimeter leads to make sure your multimeter is set to volts DC. So volts DC. And we'll just match up red with red, black with black. And we'll see what it's reading. So we're reading 13.69 volts, so we're right within spec. This converter tests good. If it was a bad converter, it would not be at the voltage it should be. So if you saw 4 volts, 2 volts, 10, 11, or even 12, when it should be at 13.6, that converter will be bad. But keep in mind, if you have a battery connected to the system, it can change your voltages around just a little bit. But if you're testing the converter just by itself with nothing hooked up to it, it should read right at the voltages on the label. Now we're going to switch over to common inverter issues. Since the inverter makes 120 volt power, everything that needs to be plugged in could be affected. So first on my list, and the most common call I get, is my fridge not working. So if your inverter is designed to keep your fridge working when you're not plugged into shore power, the bad inverter could be the culprit. If some outlets don't have power, but other ones do, this could be that string of outlets going through the inverter is not working, and possibly a fail converter or bad wiring. Now the more complicated one, this could be inside the inverter itself, where it seems like it's working, but it's really not. 
This is a bad transfer switch inside of the inverter. So now to walk you through how a basic inverter works, shore power comes in, shore power goes out. When you don't have shore power coming in, it uses battery power to create that 120 volt shore power. If the transfer switch fails, that means it won't let shore power pass through and the inverter has to be on to create 120 volt shore power. When it's creating that shore power, it's drawing power from the batteries. If you're using those outlets and using the 120 volt power, your inverter is working, supplying that power, but sometimes the converter can't keep up and then you start losing power going out of the inverter. This can be a trickle effect. If that transfer switch goes bad, your converter can be overworked and sometimes your batteries can go bad from an extreme low voltage. Yes, I've seen that a couple times. Now let me show you how to test if your inverter is working properly. Okay, now we're at the inverter and let's give you a little diagram of what's going on. So I need to find AC power in. The label's hard to see, but I can read it from this angle. So this wire here is AC power in. This wire here is AC power out. And these bigger wires are our battery. So black for negative battery, red is for your positive battery. If this is plugged into shore power, we should read around 120 volts going in and out of the inverter. So we'll set our meter to volts AC. I'll adjust the range so it's easier to read. So right now we're at 0.0, .0 volts. We will take our red test lead, put it into the black for our hot, and our white wire is our neutral. Reading 126.5. Now for our volts going out between our neutral and our hot. Reading 126.4. So pretty much the same voltage going in and out of the inverter. So that tells me everything is flowing through. Now, let me go shut off the shore power and make sure the inverter is creating 120 volt power. So I'll be right back. Okay, our shore power is off. So we'll check our power coming in. It should read zero. Yes, we are at zero volts coming in. Now going out, we're reading 119.2, 119.3. So good voltage coming out of the inverter. The other thing you can check on inverters to make sure they are working properly is check the hertz. So we'll take our multimeter, set it to hertz. On our AC out, we should read right at 60 hertz. There we go, right on 60 hertz. So this inverter is performing perfectly. No weird issues. And another thing you can use with your multimeter testing inverters is your DC amperage. So we set our multimeter to amps, go to DC, make sure we set it so it zeroes out. If I put this around the wires going in or out. So we are reading 68 amps DC flowing through the inverter. So that is how much power is pulling from the batteries. You can do some math if you're trying to figure things out to determine how long your batteries will last based on your loads if you're doing some of this testing. And that's how you test an RV inverter. Now there are a bunch of different styles of inverters throughout RVs. There could be ones like this, ones you don't see all the circuitry inside of it. But either way, they're all still the same principle. You would check AC voltage in, AC voltage out. You can check your DC voltage as well and your DC amperage. Now we're hopping into frequently asked questions. Can I replace my inverter or converter myself, or do I need a tech? Now the answer to this depends on how good you are with electricity. These are not plug and play systems. There's some wiring involved. If you're not comfortable with that, I would suggest getting a tech. The next question, how do I reset my inverter if it's not working? This will be a full power reset. So you would need to unplug from shore power. It's like pull the power out of the campground pedestal and find your battery disconnect inside of the RV and turn that off. If you don't have a battery disconnect switch, you can disconnect the battery cables off of the battery. Once you've disconnected the power 100%, let it sit for a few minutes and plug everything back in and see if it reset. Now the follow-up question that I get, is there a way to bypass the inverter if it's giving me issues? Yes, there would be because shore power goes into it, shore power goes out of it. And again, this goes back to your experience and knowledge with electricity because you would have to physically wire things together to bypass that inverter. And another question I get from people who know about 
inverters and styles and done a lot of research, is they want to know, should I upgrade from a modified sine wave to a pure sine wave inverter? Well, if you're looking to upgrade, the pure sine wave is certainly a better inverter to go with. It makes things like your lights and appliances work better and last longer because pure sine wave inverters produce power just like you're plugged into the electrical grid. And for the last question, can a faulty ground or loose wiring cause issues? Absolutely. I see loose wiring and grounds and loose neutrals give problems with converters all the time. Really, that's the most common failure for a converter. Things go wrong in the electrical system, high voltage, low voltage, a converter is one of the first things to fry. And as far as the inverter, typically those bad connections won't kill the inverter, but they make your outlets and things not work that the inverter should be supplying power to. Now I know that's a lot, and it's really confusing trying to get between the lines between the inverter and converter. So now that you know the differences, you can troubleshoot your RV issues faster. If you're looking to learn more about RVs, you'll want to check out the RV education page on my website where you find more helpful resources for RV owners and techs.